Hello everybody. In this video, I'm going to teach you guys how to use uh, or operate a Garmin Street Pilot C330 GPS. Here we have it, Garmin Street Pilot C330. Okay, let's start this tutorial. Okay, so Garmin Street Pilot C330 and C C340 series are pretty good workhorses. They're very reliable, very sturdy, and rugged GPS receiver units. Uh, they do have certain, certain limitations such as not being able to read memory cards more than 2 gigabyte. Uh, same with uh, Garmin Nuvi 350, 650, 670, and 680 and 660 which is not able to read any memory card bigger than 2 gigabytes. Um, it does not read SDHC memory cards. Those are the limitations. Other than that they're pretty good GPS units and they will function flawlessly. Before you start using your Garmin Nuvi Street Pilot C330 you have to do a quick settings setups uh, before you proceed and here's how we do it click on tools and go one by one first go to maps map detail I don't like normal do most detail because with normal you don't see a lot of streets with most detail you see almost every street in the surrounding area where you are driving okay okay so we go back now we go to map info with map info you see what version your map is and if you have multiple maps you can click by uh, on that box to uncheck or check the map for example, let's say this uh, GPS had another version of North American map and I don't want the old version to load. I simply uncheck the old version and check the new version. Whichever one is checked, that's the one that will load. If you have more than one map, uh, four or five maps, then you can scroll up and down here to see all the maps. Okay? All right, so map uh, detail is normal but I like it to be most okay and okay now map uh, is currently view map view is three-dimensional which is good but you could do track up which means whichever direction you're driving will be on top of the screen or you could do north up which uh, shows the north portion of the map on top of the screen in that case you could be driving this way you could be driving this way or this way but if you choose track up your your car will always show on the screen going this way because your track will be up and if you choose three dimensional it, which is what now is it's it's the best it's the most uh, reliable way which i like okay so i like three dimensional i'm not going to change that all right okay so we go back and we go to system in system GPS mode is always good to be normal if you travel to Europe or in, to in uh, other countries in Europe like Russia then you have to choose the WAAS and EG NOS but uh, in the United States North America and most places normal should work fine um, okay so uh, units of measurement is uh, right now it's miles uh, which is statute but you could go to metric uh, metric is for european countries North, south american countries and canada uh, basically all the world is metric except for the united states where you have to use the uh, statute uh, system now um, it's very important to choose the correct uh, unit of measurements because if you are driving in a country where the street signs are in kilometers and your GPS tells you uh, about the speed limit and how, how far are you from your exit in miles, 
you will have a very hard time understanding. Uh, so that's good to choose the correct one. Now safe mode is off but if you turn it on it will not allow you, the GPS will not allow you to operate the uh, GPS when the car is moving in motion. So it's good to turn safe mode on if you are not very experienced driver or if you are a, a driver who, who, who is really cautious. So then you need to turn the safe mode on. Uh, if you turn the safe mode off, you're taking a risk so, because you will, the GPS will allow you to enter an address when the vehicle is in motion, which is very dangerous. Okay, so we go back. About shows the information about the GPS, the software version and whatnot. Okay. And uh, now we go to time. Uh, time, uh, and there are, you cannot set up the time in a GPS. The only thing you can set up in any GPS is the time zone because the GPSs are designed to uh, get the time information from satellites because the GPS time has to be accurate by one thousandth of a second. If it's off by one thousandth of a second, the GPS will, uh, will its uh, navigation will be off by half a mile. That's why the, the clock is set by uh, the satellites automatically okay okay so this is 12 hours and 24 hours which you can change if you want to be military time then you you choose the 24 hour version in which case when it's 1 p.m. it will be 13 14 15 and so on down the line and the uh, US uh, uh, time zone is US Central but you could always change that to other time zones uh, for example you have uh, Mexico US Mountain US Pacific and whatnot you need to choose the correct one. Daylight saving should be automatic. That's good all the time. Okay. Now, if you're in Arizona, day daylight saving should be off because Arizona doesn't have daylight saving. All right. Color mode is uh, important. If if you put it on automatic when it's nighttime, it will the GPS screen will turn dark, and everything else will the writings and everything will be white. But if it's daytime, it will be everything the writings and fonts will be black and the background will be white so I have it uh, on daytime for shooting this video but uh, normally you have to put it on automatic if the screen of the GPS is dim it's getting old then put it on daytime all the time even at night okay all right so navigation and navigation, uh, this is uh, the, the preferences of your navigation. If you choose faster time, it will take you uh, through freeways and routes that will save you time. But it could be a longer distance. For, uh, but if you choose shorter distance, it will take you to the shortest route possible, uh, even though that route could have like 10 or 20 uh, red lights, intersection, and, uh, and so on. So it will take you much longer to go from point A to point B if you choose short, shorter distance. Unless you're in the middle of nowhere without any traffic lights. But if you choose faster time, then it will take you through the freeways where there are no, no stop signs, no red lights, but it's a lot more distance. Now this is only good, uh, the shorter distance is only good if you're renting a vehicle in which you're being charged per mile. Uh, so the, you don't want to increase the mileage of that vehicle otherwise uh, faster time is always good or if you are afraid of the freeways uh, I, I mean I have encountered drivers who uh, don't like to take the risk I'm talking about the newbies uh, beginner drivers who don't like to take the risks uh, of driving in the freeways then they could always choose shorter distance okay now uh, this is the type of vehicle you're driving it's very important to choose if you're driving a car or a motorcycle, a truck or a bus, emergency vehicle, and taxi. Now, why does that make any difference? Because if you're driving a truck, the GPS will try to avoid U-turns and places that trucks are normally not allowed. If you're driving a bus, same thing. If you're driving an emergency vehicle, like an, like an ambulance or, or a fire uh, uh, truck, then it will give you priority over routes that there's special fire lane or emergency vehicle lane and so on. If you're driving a taxi, it will take you to taxi stops and whatnot. So it's good to choose the correct one, okay? Alright, so 
Avoidance is enabled. Avoidance is very important. Please pay attention on this one. This is an important one. Whichever one is checked, that's that the thing that the GPS will avoid. For example, if you check U-turns, uh, because you're driving a big RV or a truck or a bus, you, you can't do U-turns, then the GPS will always avoid U-turns. If you're driving and uh, riding a bicycle, which isn't uh, allowed to go on the freeways, then you want to choose avoid highways. Uh, if your vehicle is a low rider or a sport utility, I mean a sport uh, uh, sedan vehicle such as a Corvette or something that's like uh, it cannot go off-roading, then you can choose avoid unpaved roads. But if you have an SUV, then you don't have to worry about unpaved roads. Uh, tall roads, if you're uh, driving, um, uh, if you don't want to pay uh, toll every time you go, then you want to avoid toll roads. So basically, if I avoid this, avoid this, let's see. So the UPS will not take me to, through the U-turns, no highways, no unpaved roads, no toll roads. Now, carpool lanes, obviously, if you're more than one driver, I mean, more than one passenger in the vehicle, you can use it. Um, otherwise, you can't. So that's the avoidance. So I'm going to uncheck all of them. Uh, carpool lanes uh, are designed for vehicles with uh, more than one person in it, which is HOV lane or high occupancy vehicle. That's what carpool lanes are used for. I, I don't think they have it in European countries, but it's all over in the United States. Okay, attention tone is something good. You don't want to turn it off. Leave it on. It's good because if 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 an, if there is an uh, hazard or if there's a, a loss of satellite signal it will beep and it will inform you it's it's a good thing to have okay so that's uh, one of the main things about navigation and now we are in language language this is your text language in what language the menus will appear like uh, cancel okay and all that that's the language and then you have the voice language the voice language is in American English. You can change that to any language of your choice. Okay. Now we're going to go back and show you how to navigate. If you want to, uh, after you did the setup, now it's time to navigate. The, this button is for adjusting the brightness. Right now it's at 100%. You can lower it. Let's see how low it goes. It goes to 0%, which is almost dark. Yeah, like 60% is should be enough for average person. But, you know, because I'm shooting the video, I'm going to put it as high per percentage. Okay, now uh, we're going to go to where to and where to. And um, uh, you could go, you could punch in an address. Uh, for example, spell the state, state name. Uh, let's say uh, I'm going to California, the state, state of California. Then uh, you choose C. You know what? I get too much reflection. Hold on a second. Let me adjust this so I don't get as much reflection. I'm getting a whole bunch of reflection here. Okay. I think I'm going to increase the brightness of the screen to eliminate some of the reflection. There. Okay, so now uh, I can change, spell the state and change it to a different state. Let's say I'm going to choose Tennessee, uh, or if I choose a different state, you could do that. Now, if you don't know the exact uh, uh, spelling of that state, all you have to do is, all you have to do is punch in the first letter and it will give you the list of the state to start with that letter. For example, if I go to change state and I just put N, for example, and then I hit done, it will give me every state that starts with N, which is Nebraska, Nevada, uh, New Brunswick, New Hampshire, New York. Okay, now, see, the, uh, I got a little confused because some of these states are not in the U.S., they're in Canada. That's why I got a little confused. 
but uh, because this has a North American map, so it includes Canadian states and the U.S. states. Uh, all right. Okay. So now, if you uh, want to go to a place to eat, you choose food, and then you can search like Asian food, American food, and whatnot. Uh, let's say you want American food, and then it will search for all the American foods nearby, and then you can choose from that list. Okay. All right. Uh, lodging is if you want to find a hotel to sleep, it shows all the different places. Uh, my location is your favorite, like your home and whatnot, which you could do. Fuel, uh, wherever you want to go to pump gas. And then uh, spell the name. For example, you want to go to like a place, like let's say Starbucks. And then you go ST, and, and then it will search, and you go from there. Okay? And then we go here, intersections, you put the uh, name of the first street and the second street of an intersection, and it will, it will t tell you, you know. So let's say in California, I'm going to uh, uh, what city and address, so spell city. I'm going to send you okay, send you California and then I'm going to go to Broadway and 4th Avenue okay Broadway and 4th. Street 2nd is 4. Run. Okay, so Broadway and 4th. Okay, so there is no such thing as Broadway and 4th. Let's see what else. 4th Avenue, there. Okay, so Broadway and 4th Avenue. And then I click go. So basically, this will, the GPS will take me to that intersection. So this is how you choose the intersection. And that's the option where it says, let me go back, back. Okay, option to go where to, and then scroll down and choose intersection. Now you're probably gonna say, why would I wanna uh, choose intersection? Um, if I have an address. Well, the thing is, in most countries, you do have an address, but some countries, you don't have an address, and you have to, uh, the addresses are not organized like it is in the U.S., and you have to punch in an intersection to get close to the place where you're trying to go. So that's why, in a, a lot of places, that's how they give you uh, their uh, address directions. They say, okay, you need to come to the corner of this and this, and then walk 10 miles, I mean, walk 10 yards to the left, and you will see our building, like that. All right, so uh, now we are going to attractions. Attractions are, you know, amusement parks and whatnot. Tourist attractions, shopping areas, you just click and choose. Parking places, click and choose. Entertainment, you click and choose. Recreational, click and choose. And then you have some more. Community, cities, browse the map, auto services, transit, hospitals. So these are the options that you can choose from to go to from a Garmin Nuvi Street Pilot and uh, basically uh, it's, it's pretty simple the volume control is right here if you want to increase or decrease the volume right there the power button is right here under the USB plug that's the power and then there's another thing it's the reset button it's underneath this front bezel so if I want to press the reset if the GPS is frozen for any reason so this is how I get it. You remove this. Hold on. Let me do it this way so you can see how I'm doing it. You remove the front bezel like this. Like this. See that? And the reset button is right there. That's the reset. 
So if I press the reset right now, it's resetting. See that? Okay. Now I'm going to teach you how to reset all the information in there, like all the um, stored addresses and everything. Okay. So I'm going to put my finger right here and turn it on. Uh, as my finger is here, I turn it on. Watch. Okay. I don't let go of my finger. Keep my finger in there. See? Do you really want to erase all user data? You just click yes. Now everything on the GPS has been erased. Everything. So basically the GPS is like the way it came from the factory. You choose language, choose region, daylight savings, and there you go. Now I'm going to go back and choose daytime colors. There you go. And right now if I go where to and my favorite locations, and I say go home, it's telling me enter your home address because it got wiped clean. If I choose favorite, the only favorites are Garmin's default favorites. And if I choose recent selections, there is none because I never went anywhere. Everything was cleared. Okay, so that's how you use or operate Garmin Street Pilot uh, C330. Now these street pilots have a mount on the on the back which goes right here and that's how you mount the GPS right here. The mount goes right here. But you could also mount it differently. I've seen some on, some of them online that they have a suction cup mounted here and then you can mount it from there. So you know, there are different types of mounting mechanism. Whichever one works good for you, you can use that. Okay, I hope this video was educational and you learned something from it. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you for watching.